Hallo, hallo. Es geht jetzt langsam los. Und ich rede jetzt nicht wirklich was Sinnvolles, sondern versuche einfach nur, alle, die noch draußen stehen, hier reinzulocken, weil der Beginn der Veranstaltung durchaus eine gewisse Ruhe erfordert, weil sich alle gerne unterhalten wollen. Ähm, ja, keine Sorge, keine Angst, äh, ich werde keine Rede halten. Ich stelle mich nur kurz vor und möchte hier einfach mal eine kleine Begrüßung machen. Michael Wieselhöfer, äh, ich stehe hier stellvertretend für den Verein zur Gründung und Förderung eines Deutschen Fotoinstituts e.V., DFI in der Kurzform genannt. Die Initiatoren dieser Reihe Tower Photography, ähm, die dann tollerweise Anja Kolischko engagiert haben, die ein wunderbares Programm ausgearbeitet hat, äh, wo das hier die zweite Veranstaltung ist. Und a very warm welcome Thank to you. Hadi Palapiche. Thank you. We're super happy to have you here. Thanks so much. And if I just keep it going in English and then I'm, I'm done already. So many, many thanks for Anja's work. And Hadi will do a performance lecture. And following to this performance lecture or lecture performance. Don't Somewhere blame in between. Me. Don't blame me. <laughs> um, just uh, this, this uh, talk, which will be open later on. And uh, we are also very happy that that Sparta is in cooperation with Towards Photography now, as well as, of course, the Skulpturamt der Stadt Düsseldorf, Landeshauptstadt Düsseldorf. So I stop now and yeah, uh, Caroline Eidner will participate in this talk. Uh, Pia Benfeld, Bill Bödeke. And uh, did I miss someone? Anja, of course. Yeah, sure. And that's it. So enjoy the evening. And again, many, many thanks to Hardy. Great to have you here. Thanks so much. So basically, you did the introduction I wanted to do, but thank you very much. So I don't have to do it. But I just maybe say a few words about Hadi. Hadi Palapiche was born in 1987 in Iran. And um, he said to me while we were talking over Zoom um, that he was uh, or he comes from the dark room. And it is because his parents both were photographers. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and in the age of 25, I think you said, you moved to New York to do your Master uh, of Arts degree in photography at the Bard College. And after that, you, you stayed in the States. And um, yeah, and everything else. We had a very long talk yesterday with Caroline Eidner, who is uh, today with us as a moderator of the evening. Uh, we we spoke like for about three hours or so. So I will I will not continue to speak now because I'm afraid that I will spoil something from the talk you will be doing um, now. And yeah, uh, I think Caroline doesn't really need an introduction because um, I guess everyone knows her who is around in Düsseldorf. So she she um, she studied at the class of um, Rosemarie Tarhockel and finished her studies in 2014. Um, and yeah, she will she will be the one who will be like also let's say starting the conversation after after the lecture performance. And yeah, as uh, Michael said already, um, today's evening is a cooperation with Sparta and Pia and Tilla sitting here in front and will also ask questions, I hope. And yeah, so I would say enjoy the evening. And do you, do you want to say something? Yeah, since we start later for the internet audience, uh, we um, continue after the discussion with the Q&A and go directly into it. So you find the Zoom link in the video description. <laughs>
Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the invite, Ania. Um, I'm, I'm really um, excited to be talking with you all. Um, it's supposed to be a lecture performance, um, but I don't really understand what does it mean. So I will do a performance at the beginning, and then we will do the lecture. It's going to be a very small, quick performance, and then the lecture will be um, just me talking, basically. Um, so this is called Dog Saying I Like Cats. So I think it's I think it's important to know a little of the background of um, the artist or the person who is presenting. So um, I will start by talking a little of my background, where I come from, um, and how I ended up being. Um, is the mic too far? It's fine. Um, um, so as Anya said, I I was born in Iran um, in Tehran. Um, both parents were photog my both parents were photographers. Um, and my mother was also a photography teacher, so um, it's quite hu um, humorous when I say um, I grew up in a dark room, um, because in fact we always had a dark room in our in our place, in our apartment, um, in our house. Um, sometimes it was in the basement, sometimes it was the extra um, shower room turned to a dark room, sometimes it was the third um, bedroom turned to a dark room. Um, but in fact, um, as a child, I wasn't allowed to enter my parents' dark room. So um, in, 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 in reality, we never really um, entered the dark room to help them or to, to make work or to help them or to, to do something. Somehow they believed this is not for children. Part of it, maybe it was because at the time they believed that it's so toxic, the, the, the chemicals. Um, but um, something quite kind of um, contradictionary was happening at the time. Maybe you all have um, have a kind of memory about it. Um, at the time, my parents and the kind of the cultural understanding of where I grew up in, in Tehran was that um, the parents shouldn't um, the parents shouldn't physically punish their children. That's not going to help. That's going to cause um, more problems in the future. So the idea in Iran, the cultural understanding was that um, coming up with punishments that wouldn't be physical. So one thing that they had come up with was that to put the child in the shower room for, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or put them in the put an extra room that they will have a quiet, alone time. So in, in our case, the punishment room was the dark room. Um, we were never allowed to be in, but I was put in the dark room to, um, to realize they have done something wrong, to, to I, sh I should, I should um, focus and concentrate. And then after like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I, I was allowed to come out and tell my parent that, um, I realized that the revelation had happened in the in the dark room, and I had um, had learned what what I did, what, what I did wrong, basically. Um, but within the system, I I hated photography so much that I didn't want to do anything with it. I did not want to be anything like my parents. Um, my parents hated digital photography also. So when I was a teenager, I I saved my money and I bought a digital camera just to annoy them. Um, and then I, 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 I mean, it's very funny because uh, to some extent, it wasn't really on purpose. I think it's like something subconscious you might do as a child, as a, as a teenager to your um, family. Um, but somehow those kind of um, young, young who teenage, who mistakes or decisions kind of dictates your life, what, what you end up being. Um, so I, at, at a very young age, I, I had this digital camera and my parents were really trying to be artists in Iran at the time. They wanted to be art. They wanted to show their work, um, and I wanted to do anything that would be against them. So, um, from the age um, 18, I did fashion photography. I did um, sport photography. I did um, journalism, but no art. I didn't want to be an artist. I wanted to do other things. I wanted to be the against them, basically, to some extent. Um, till I got older, and I was like, I got to a school. I, I went to a, um, I went to a study. 
um, and I hated the whole thing altogether. So um, I, I decided to be an um, electronic engineer. In fact, I studied two years to be a um, aerospace electronic engineer in Iran. Um, although they were really pushing me to be an artist, they were like, "You have something special. You have something very interesting. You, you are like, you are the most sensitive child of the family." Um, while I was trying to be an air engineer, but again, the coincidence of the time, um, I, I failed all the electronic engineering classes, and basically, I was um, kicked out of the school. I wasn't, I didn't leave the school. I was like, they said, you cannot come back to these classes. So I. Um, I, I, I come to my senses that maybe I'm an artist at the end. Maybe I should be an artist. Like this is like the, even the school is kicking me out. Um, so I did some small shows at the time. I'm, I was like around 22, 23. I did some small shows, um, and then my uh, one show I did in Tehran, um, and it was closed. The show um, due to censorship um, to some extent. Um, so it kind of made sense that maybe I should um, leave this whole thing altogether and maybe I go somewhere that it makes sense to be an artist. I mean, to some extent also like to uh, rationally thinking, it was to, to see my parents struggling to be an artist. It was like that maybe the system wouldn't even allow for an artist or like a writer or an individual intellectual thinker. Um, but with all this kind of small background and uh, kind of the storytelling I'm telling you guys, um, I applied to go to an, a school for an MFA, but within this whole kind of baggage of the history, I um, I said I'm going to be a photographer. I, I, I want to be a master in photography. I want to get my MFA in photography. And already at the time, I, I had I had found some friends through online kind of, um, at the time it was Facebook, social media, um, that I would, I would chat with them, I would talk with them on Facebook. Um, and sometimes they would send me some original kind of texts from Art Room. We didn't have Art Room in Tehran, we didn't have, um, much material, really original material. So through my kind of uh, my own research, I had found some like interesting, let's say, extensions of post-war German photography, of um, American kind of stage photography, of all kind of like these kind of different ideas of what was what is West Coast photography in the state, what is East Coast photography. So I thought like I have something, I have some like some knowledge, I could become the uh, this artist, um, the photographer. Um, so I, I I got I applied to the school. I arrived to America. Um, and when I arrived, I, I carried all my equipments. My, my father gave me his camera, my mother gave me his, her lens, all these different things. I had my own equipment. So I came up with a very big luggage of photography equipment. He's going to be the master of, um, of, a master of fine art in, in, in the Department of Photography. I arrived to the school. Um, I made some images the first two months. Um, and what happened was within the first four months, I ended up selling all the equipments. I didn't know how hard it was and how expensive it was in New York, so I would just sell it to, to pay for the, the life at the time. And I was at the BART program. I don't know how many of you guys know about this program. It's, it was quiet and probably it still is. A very kind of intellectually run, very open. Um, we had departments, but the idea was we are all doing the, everything. You can do whatever you want. So when my teacher learned that I have sold my um, equipment and I don't have the equipment, the idea was that, well, you don't need to be a photographer anymore, but just start make painting or do sculptures or um, whatever you want. Um, um, but what I said to response was that, no, I cannot. I'm here to be a photographer. And I'm going to be a photographer here. So what, what, what I did was, um, I was like, well, I have the knowledge. I know, I kind of know how things work. I'm going to make photographs. I want to be graduating from the Department of Photography. Um, and um, I will start making photographs without a camera, without lens, without negative. I will. Um, I I started going to the dark room. Um, um, I started going to the dark room. I, the, the, the school was giving us free paper, so I would just take this paper, go to the dark room, um, and start kind of um, use the flashlight at the time to um, to to make some work. Um, somehow it's not the laser is working, but um, there you go. Um, so the school was giving us um, free paper, but the paper was very small. The paper was, um, I think, 30 by 40 centimeter. I would, uh, in the darkness, I would put the paper together, and I would start um, kind of drawing the images I wanted to make. Um, but at the time, at the time, it's, it's so interesting how things changes through kind of even like within a five years range. Um, at the time, I remember in the school there was this focus on 
well you have to talk about where you come from you have to you have to tell your work is your manifestation of who you are how how is kind of how, what kind of critic you are going to do against yourself or your identity or kind of what, what what is this work like the idea of writing a statement writing a, um, to talk about your work kind of you were not really required but it was suggested if you could talk what you are criticizing it would be interesting so um I, I was going to the dark room, and my idea was that, well, I'm going to, I mean, I was like 25 years old, young, first year MFA student. So I wanted to criticize, um, at the time as an artist, I wanted to criticize um, the system I grew up, the, the Islamic Republic, let's say, or the, the, the state of like being Iranian. Um, you won't really see it unless I point out to it, but like, for example, like, I think you could see like a human here, it's like a um, half, that's the nose, that's like the beard. So if it was like the bearded guy, the, the Ayatollah, the whatever you would call it, you would probably see it somewhere here, a, a face. That's like the, I don't know if you see it, but I kind of see it here, that's the, yeah. Um, so in, in every book, I would go to a dark room and I would start making this, this guy who was a prayer, basically. Like he's kind of bending here, he's like kneeling. Um, and then I would, I would start writing these kind of jokes on the work that you can't see really because it was in darkness, but there are kind of handwritings. Um, and it was done with, um, basically with flashlight and some paint. Um, I, and as you could see, it was my really, I think the first time going to the darkness and doing something to this effect, like there is all these historical photographers who have worked in the darkness. Um, like from the American side, there is James Belling, there's, there's all these other kind of West Coast photographers. There are, I mean, there's, there's this history of going to the, I guess Thomas Roth, what Cam Tillmans has done. I wanted to make my own version, so I was like, this is going to be messy, this is going to be chaotic. Um, and the school was very supporting. They were seeing that something is happening and I'm maybe trying hard to do something. So I was getting the support that this is good, something interesting is happening, um, you are doing great. So I end up making this work, I would at the end put them together. Um, and I really wanted the people to, I really wanted the people to know what is this work about, what is, what is, what is the meaning of the work, I really wanted the, the viewer, the audience, to understand the work. So although, as you see that, it's very hard to read this text, um, on the side of the work, I, I, would again, I would again type out what was on the work, type in English in Arial kind of font, and um, hang it to the work, so the viewer won't miss the, what was in the work. Um, um, is there, there's a better image here. So um, I really wanted them to... Um, and, and, and again, the school was really supportive of this decision, like, this is good, this is a title, and I was thinking, like, I'm doing, doing something politically, like, interesting, because let's talk about the title, this is a very long as title of the work, like, it's like five lines, and when, when you do something like that, the, the, the school, the education system always kind of comes to support, so then they were telling me all these other artists who had, like, very long titles, like, something to that extent. Um, so I was very proud, and, and in, um, in our... So I sh it, it was my basically the uh, final graduation work. I worked on it for two years to find the best work. Um, and to make it more clear, this is like about the criticism of where I come from. I, I use these prayer beads to hang the title from them. Um, and somehow, the, I, I, I believe it was something interesting to, to see like in a um, kind of graduation thesis show. Um, so I got a show out of my graduation thesis show. We were at Bard, it's 12 hours north of New York, but I got a small show in New York, and I was um, up to the moon that, wow, like I did it, I, I did something so unusual, and it was registered, and then I got the recognition. So I have a show in New York. Um, I, I, I installed this show in New York, um, and it was quiet, as you could see, it was installed quite in a standard form, like, I don't know, 10 inch or like 20 centimeter from the bottom, the, like one work in the end of the room, you would see, come and see, something like that. that that's what, how it was installed. Um, and um, what happened was, it's quite interesting how kind of the, the event of things happening kind of dictates what, what comes next. I was really hopeful that this is going to be the breakout show. This is going to make me like really registered as the new photographer. Um, and I was very young, I had never had really this kind of shows, so I was, we were talking the other day, um, I did something that I would not really um, suggest anyone to do, and I, I can't believe I, I did that, but because I had this show in New York, um, I would go every day to the, to the gallery to, to greet the viewers, to meet them, to see what they are going to say about my work, and really I didn't meet that many people, but um, one day I was there, um, 
and um, I had got to know like the New York art scene to some extent. So like, I knew the critics of New York Times from Art Forum. From the, I, I knew if someone is coming that that's probably the critic of this uh, magazine or the newspaper. Um, so one day I was at the gallery waiting to meet the people and um, this critic came with his partner or his friend probably. Um, they walked to the show and I was sitting right by the door of the gallery. When they were leaving, they said, um, not to me, to, to each other, the guy said to this friend, um, he doesn't know how to install a show. And that's, that really broke my heart. That was really like, oh my God. Like I was thinking I'm going to get a New York Times review. That's all I got. I, I don't know how to install a show. And I, I even don't know what I had done wrong with this show. Like it was quite a standard. Like I don't know what were they expecting to be installed. But it, it really, it was like a hammer to my head that I was like, I, there is something wrong. So I guess like when I'm describing it, maybe you might call the critic like being at wrong. But at the time I believed somehow by living in the state, I had believed, I had learned that it's nobody's fault. And I had learned that the America is really semi kind of on the favor of blaming others. So I had made it clear, I had promised all my friends that I'm not going to blame anyone. It's all, the blame is always on me. So when I heard this critic of these photographs, like, I mean, I think there were, there were so many things you could say about this work, but just to be, to be criticized by the installation of the work, um, I, I, it was like that, that critic came like last week of the show or something. So I spent the next seven days of my show, of the last week of my show, sitting in the spaces, still, still going back, and writing down on, a, on my notebook all the things I have done wrong, that if a critic comes in, all they see is not the work, but the install of the work. So the first thing I wrote was that I should have not talked about my past. No one wants to hear about this religious guy. I mean, you could probably see it here too, like that's his head, that's his head there, this all over, this is his whole head. I was like, well, nobody wants to hear about this. Why are you, why are you making this? Second, the work is too crowded. The work is too chaotic. The work doesn't even allow someone to see something. So maybe they have right to only look at the install because the work is impossible to read. Second, but my, my, my third uh, realization was that no one wants to hear from an immigrant to deal with language. And I had filled the whole thing with language and I was dictating to also read the right way of the... the... So... <laughs> there, there were probably more problems. Um, what was there? The, the work doesn't have a frame, doesn't look like a photograph. If it's a photograph, where is the glass and where is the frame? If it's a painting, where is the stretcher bar? Who wants to look at something like this? So it was all my fault. I was like, okay, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, nobody told me in the school. How could they support me in the school? Like, look at all these problems in the work. Like, I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> so, um, but also, the, the this, these were my projections to the work, but I had heard the, the real critic. He doesn't know how to install the show. Um, so what I did was, I, 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 I really told, I, I made copies of this paper, I put it on my fridge, I put it on the bedroom, on the studio, and, the, and at the time, um, I will just say it in parentheses, I was, um, I was in Bard College, I had graduated, um, and Bard is three hours north of New York, almost two hours and 45 minutes north of New York in a rural place. Most of the people who go to a school, they leave the school after they go to their, because nobody lives around the place really. It's like a really rural place. But um, I was waiting for my artist visa. I was hoping to get an artist visa because I didn't want to go back to Iran. And um, it seemed that going to New York would be very expensive. So I chose to stay in upstate around the school. I, I just found a cheaper place with a garage that I was like, this is perfect. This is going to be my dark room. Um, so like during this show when I'm describing, I was going to the exhibition. Um, I was staying at a friend's house in New York because it was impossible to go from my from upper state to my show in New York. Um, but after this end of the show, I, I basically took all the work back to my to a role and I took them upper state. And I said, I'm going to fix all these problems. I'm going to take care of all of this. Um, so I started at a time in upper state. This is the work I, I made after the after my show, after my graduation in upper state. I was like, um, it's it's. To, to, to just add one more thing to the work, it was that, um, to, to my list of the problems, the problem of the work, I think, I, I thought it was that it has nothing for an American viewer to recognize. Like, what are they looking at? Like, what is this really? It's like someone's nightmare or a dream. So the first, <laughs> the first work I did was like, I'm going to make something recognizable. What the Americans like, they like cars. Here's a tire. 
but but it's still you could kind of recognize the kind of photographic issues. So I I found the image of a tire. I printed kind of on a, a film like a negative. I enlarged it. You could kind of recognize this line. This is a this is a I think it's eight sixty centimeter or um, eighty centimeter roll. So I have doubled it. So it was the work was hundred sixty centimeter by probably like three meter. Um, so I made this large image, but that's a tire. I also bought a, I, 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 I didn't have a mind to buy it. I went to like a tire shop and I was like, is there any not used tire you are using? Like, any used tire, you don't use it anymore. So I got to a scrap tire. I put them on the board and the paper and I continued doing the same thing I was doing, like drawing because I didn't have a camera. It's, as you see, this is the flashlight kind of making these lines. Um, I will show you some more. Um, I found an image of an American truck. It's a Dodge. Which is very funny. I have not seen one of these cars in the Europe. I have been in France, here, Germany. It doesn't exist. It's very interesting. It's very American thing. So I was right even at the time. I was very new in the state, but I recognized this is something very American. Um, <laughs> and like that was, and the, there were other things happening also. I will also say it in parentheses, it's also like kind of more like a biographical site. Um, this is the time Trump got elected. And when Trump got elected, um, I had three neighbors in, in this rural place. Um, and what had happened was when I when I moved to Upper State, I went and introduced myself to my neighbors as an emerging artist, recent graduate of MFA. They had no idea what I'm talking about probably, but I was like making sure they hear these words and that I'm waiting for my visa. So <laughs> this work I was making was also kind of responding to my life. It was like a daily life. Um, just to go back again quick, this was like my critic of the past, my history, my background, where I come from. This was supposed to be my daily life. So a tire shop next to my house, I make a work about tire. My neighbor is an asshole racist showing me his gun. Here is a, he, he, that was his like, um, he didn't have this car. His car was very old and very bad, like from 90s, but I, I just attached him to this. Um, I, I, I didn't have, I don't know, I, I, I was disgusted by this fashion style in office state, so I would make, find this kind of fashion models from the magazines. I would, and how it's being done is basically, I would find these uh, pictures from magazines, from newspaper, scan it, uh, print it on, the, on the, um, a transparency film, so I have a negative because I didn't have a camera. So it was like a digital image turned to a negative, basically. And then I was doing my very minimal kind of marks, kind of the artist is there, but it was very minimal, not, not, not annoying the audience, not, not bothering you, not making chaotic, but it's there, the, the, the signature is there. Um, um, so I made this work for, from, from November, it, uh, Trump basically got elected November 8th. It was, became clear my work has to kind of be responding to my life in upper state, but, but the, the kind of trouble I was going in. Um, so from November, from November 15, a week after he got elected till May, mid May, end of May of 2017, I made this work that I you just saw some of them. And, um, Every work I made, it's quite, it's quite strange to, to look at it right now, but every, every work I made, um, I would use the newspaper from the same day I made the work and back it up, that, that paper, the, the photograph with the newspaper behind it. So if you look at the work in person, you could, re, you could read the date of the newspaper, which is the date the photograph was made, and also all the things that's going on, like all this kind of news around the world at the time. Um, but I had one other thing in mind when I made this work like this because I had learned my lesson. I don't know how to install a show. So I was like, well, I cannot, I, I have made this work of a year, but I cannot install it. I don't know how to install it. I, I really believe this critic that I don't know. So I had came up with this idea that because I don't know how to install a work, I'm going to perform these photographs. And through this kind of internal conversation, What's more exciting than that? Someone performing photographs, like this whole, the photographer being a performance artist, the photographer being someone has been historically on the road, that whole thing is a performance. So I'm going to perform my photographs. Um, so they were not allowed to be, I, I had told myself, you're not allowed to show them on the wall. You should perform them like, like this. So I, I um, within this process, um, I, I managed to get my visa um, and I moved to New York. So this is right now in New York. Um, and I, I would invite people to my studio, um, which was the basement at the time, um, to, to see the performance. So um, you could kind of see maybe go some more images. I would make these three walls here. There was like one wall, like a, a small theater, one wall, the, the wall behind me, one wall of photograph. I would come in the center 
and perform these photographs. I would open these photos and the whole thing was like 45 minutes. I would come in and um, open the photos and um, tell the story of them. This is what happened. This is the day police, the immigration police came after me. Um, there is probably, um, there is the, there is a, there is a day that my neighbor we got a fight. Um, so every work had a, every work had a, um, a specific caption, but it was told through my voice. So I would open this work for one minute. Within one minute, I had to finish the story of the work that was happening on it. Um, and then I would roll it and go to the next work. Um, and I, I was really hopeful I have taken care of all the problems, right? So there is no more of problem, my Iranian problem in the work. There is no more of, there is no more of not recognizing something in the work. There is no more of, um, no one wants to hear about this religious Iranian guy. And that is quite minimal and you can kind of get a sense of what is there. There is an image of, you know, there is a performance. It's, that's my leg basically, I guess, that you could see. Um, this is my body, basically. I, I don't know if you could see it, uh, but this is my head kind of hiding inside this part. This is my hand. Um, so I, I performed this piece for probably 10 people in private and three times in, 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 in public spaces. Um, and this one was worse than the first time. After every, con after every performance, half of people would run out of the space. like. <laughs> holding their head and they don't want to talk that what was what was what we saw and the other half if they asked the question was so it's quite interesting if the, the most repeated question I heard about this work was so who is the photographer here and I was like what do you mean and the question was well you didn't take these pictures right so who is the photographer here like going back to 90s talking about the appropriation in photography issues of like who is is the real photographer being credited here um, and the other question was constantly being questioned was that, are you okay now? <laughs> because, because a lot of work was my, about, about my life in upper state living with racist neighbors in, in the Trump time. So, uh, and, uh, and I was okay. I was thinking, I'm okay and that's not important. Like, let's talk about what I'm doing. It's like, there is something new maybe happening. I'm trying to do something new. This is something interesting with photography. I'm pushing it. I, I think I'm pushing something here. Um, so it was, it was rejected. I, I was really annoyed. It wasn't rejected. I was really annoyed by the response I was getting that I said, um, and I would do this kind of other things. Like I had this kind of, um, so like when the police, when the police car would come, then I would also put that light on my head and it starts sounding like a police car, you know, to make it more believable. Uh, <laughs> so what happened was, um, this was worse than the first time. This was like, that the first time nobody understood it, like no, nobody was coming to see my show. I was able to bring people to my exhibition, to my performances, but nobody wanted to talk about the work. So I again sat down, made a list. None of this is working. No one to once, no one, this was my second list of this work. No one wants to hear an immigrant voice in America speaking English because the accent is too high. It's too thick, it's too hard, it's too annoying. Okay, sorry about that. The second thing is, the second thing is nobody knows how this work is going to exist in the world. So what's going to happen to the work? That's the problem. I have to take care of that. The third, the third part was no one wants to hear an immigrant criticizing the system outside because who are you to tell us that our president or our system isn't really functioning the way it should function? So I took all of them, again, this list, and I was like, okay, it's on me. It's, no, it's, not, it's not on people. It's, it's people... And I, this, is, this is even today my belief. I think people are always right. I think the public has something that the individual can't see. So I was just saying, okay, the blame is on me. So, but I didn't want to give up this idea of art making with photography, right? So I started rolling this whole work, putting it in the storage um, and making some new works, hoping that, I'm, hope, hoping that I'm talking about the condition of having an idea, having a goal in mind trying to achieve it and it might fail or not, like it might fall to the, and then kind of suggesting that the, the idea of a goal is like a trap. So then whatever you're hoping, what's your goal, it becomes your trap and then you end up regretting the whole thing. So I, in six months, I made only these two work, um, this one and this one, and there's one more, it's a yellow work. Very simple, nothing about me, nothing about past, nothing about today, nothing about president, nothing about politics, nothing about nothing. It's just a formal, simple, and I convinced a friend of mine to give me a very small 
you might have a um the dust like it was like a very small studio like this and I showed it like one on this one and one that wall. We invited some people and um this time I <laughs> this time I had learned my lesson. I'm not going to be present in the space. I I stayed in upper state or somewhere uh, um, not not in the gallery, but I would check on the galleries. Who was my friend also? Are people talking about the work? What are they saying? My friend who was running this space said they are constantly asking if the artist was a football player. <laughs> and I was like, why would they? I was giving them everything they wanted to hear about me. They don't want to hear. Now they are asking me the, the relation of this work and my past, or if I, if I was a photographer at some point, if I was like, what's my relation to a sport? So I, I figured this is, the, the whole thing is a trap. The whole thing is a, the, the, this is a trap basically. So I said, um, I will take care of it. This is, no, this is maybe too empty. No one can really connect. They, 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 are, they are looking for the artist in the work. So I'm going to make, I'm going to add a human to it. I'm going to add a figure to the work again, but very slowly, very kind of controlled. It's just there, you can kind of decide, I won't be there, my voice won't be there. You can decide if it's the artist or if it's the, just the character. This, this, this work is really important because also you could kind of see everything I'm describing within the work, someone being trapped, someone, maybe he, maybe the, the, the figure itself kicking the kind of the, um, the ledge for the trap to fall, you know, and then the idea of the house and everything was in it. Um, and I constantly kind of made these works that kind of response to this idea of trapment, you know, the, the figure in the, in the house, the goal. Um, again, the same thing kind of is being repeated. Um, and um, by, by by chance, to some extent, um, I I had a studio visit with the with the uh, with my uh, we became friends, very good friends. Um, uh, Parinos, who runs the Tramps Gallery, you might have known of this space. Um, it's in New York. It's a it's a quite a strange space. Um, it's in the second floor of a Chinatown mall. It's, it's exists, it's, the, the the space is basically this a small storefronts turned to um, turned to a gallery. Um, so I, I basically showed all this work that I was describing again in the work with the hope that this time it would be received differently. Um, and you could see like there are more figures, there is more kind of characters in the work. Um, for the first time I used this mouse and cat. Um, and then um, this work became really popular somehow. This, this, this was the work, everyone was curious. It, this, this, basically this room became the most crowded room every time people were coming and at the opening. So I was like, okay, maybe there's a lesson for me. People, people don't like the character so much, but they are responding to the, to the cat and mouse. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to respond to that. I'm going to take it and do something with it. So from there, basically, this idea of cat and mouse came to the work. And then I added the fourth uh, kind of character, to it, which is a dog. You will see that it comes in. Um, but at, this, at the same time, so I, I got a very good, I got a very good um, response to the work with that show. We got very, I got very good reviews, um, um, kind of somehow, which was quite interesting how it was registered suddenly, but um, very good response came to the work. Uh, but, but people had a hard time to understand what is this. People were thinking either it's a painting or it's a um, vinyl print. I, I, I have not even seen in person a, a vinyl print as an art to this extent, I guess. Um, so I was at the sculpture center at the time. I, I, I was accepted to be in the, the sculpture center show. Um, so. I was like, I, it's my job to make it easy for people to understand what's this work. So I went one step backward and I made the work without color. So to just, if someone is looking at the work, they would recognize, oh, that's like, um, maybe I should a little explain here how is the work is being made, this work that you are seeing, this work. It's basically an unexposed paper in the dark room. I put it on the floor and I believe you guys all have been in the dark room, probably both dark rooms, but just for the sake of if someone hasn't been. When you hear dark room, if you haven't been in a dark room, you imagine a place with a red light or with a safe light. That's a black and white dark room when you can kind of see. With a color dark room, um, you have no light. You, you don't see anything. Any kind of light will burn the paper, will kind of um, affect the paper. So it's a pitch darkness kind of a state. And that's all I have been doing. So it's from the first day that I lost my equipment and I went to dark room, I had always been to this kind of pitch black darkness dark room. Um, but here I... I, I I, I, I kind of forced myself to go one step backward, erase the color from the work, make it easy for the viewer to understand what's happening. That this is someone in the darkness painting with a flashlight. That is how the work is being done, in fact. This is, so this is too tiny to imagine as a source of flashlight, but my flashlights are basically a little bigger than this. Um, 
and they, they are being kind of and they have like different gels and colors and transparent colors. So like a painter who has the paint brushes, I have these different flashlights, and I basically paint on the I I, I painted light, let's say. Um, um, but I wanted to make it clear for people. So I said, forget about the light. I'm going to make it clear. People understand. They should understand what's happening. I got such a bad response from this work because they were like, why is this photographs in the sculpture center? It's like, what's the, what's the point here? Um, but but then I, I was also responding to my own work. So this work was the least popular work based on my understanding from that show. And mainly because people were concerned, what is this? And this is this is just a light mistake. This was literally a light mistake. But people were responding, "What is that? Oh, it's in darkness. What is that on the on the body?" And so my decision was that for the next show, I'm going to hide that thing. So the the, the human is putting it back, whatever it was. Um, and then I made this animal to kind of a response. I I I I guess I'd like to also challenge myself. So I was a little annoyed why people are loving so much cat and mouse. So I decided to make an. Um, a foreign animal. This was called a foreign animal. So it's not a cat, a mouse, a dog. It's something you don't know. It's 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 the artist. It's someone you can't really put your finger on. It. What kind of animal is it? Um, but people really hated it. So, so I did, I stopped making. It. Um, one interesting thing happened with this sculpture. With 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 everything I'm saying, I mean, I'm not really forcing or hammering this other kind of issues around photography of political, personal, you know, um, biographical. Um, kind of American politics, the world's politics, but I'm not afraid of it. And I kind of, I think it's always present in the work. So like this work, um, you might just find it cute or funny or what is this even or, or absurd. But um, this was this was based on a racial word against, um, racial kind of slur used against people from Middle East. Um, so um, as a sculptor, it, it was also one of my first kind of pottery making. Um, it was um, in a stuff using a glaze. I glazed the, um, I don't feel comfortable to say the word, but there was a racial slur um, consisting of sand regarding the people from Middle East. Um, so um, I, I, I chose to glaze the piece with sand and not with glaze. So the glaze is something that comes like a light to photograph. Glaze is something that comes to a sculpture, gives it shine, makes it beautiful, makes it strong. This piece didn't have glaze, it had sand on it. It was it was the poor kind of sculpture. It was the poor, um, the, the, it was the sculpture from the, from the sun from the Middle East. And because it was, it's nobody's fault that this monkey is from there. So in order to glaze it, this, the red part is basically, the monkey was being lashed with glaze. So I used the belt, I put, put the belt in the, in the paint, in the glaze, and I would basically hit the, the sculpture. I was trying to do something really political and something provoking to some extent of like, wow, like who, who gets the right to talk about something. I had a, it's, it's quite funny, a story, an experience. I had a class visit from another school came to see this show. They asked if I could be present for the show for the, to, to give them a tour. While I'm talking about all of these things, this, there were two students that started a deb debate. What is the debate about? Why an artist would decide to hurt animals? And I was like, where is the animal? And they were like, here's the animal. So that was quite interesting to me because no one was again hearing the maybe the meaning of the work, what's in under the layers, what, what, what the context of the work. But this is the first time I kind of sensed people were regarding my work. I started having sympathy toward the toward the creature, toward the work. But but I I wanted to I want and I was quite surprised by it. But I was like, how can I how can this can come back to photographs? Because that's 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 what I want to happen. I want people to stand in front of my photograph and have something to it, to so like have a disagreement or agreement with it. So this other students was in support of something like this, because they're animals, and the other one was like, why are you doing something like that? Um, this is a this is a work I kind of this is where I started kind of dealing. You could kind of sense it here. I became very interested in making architecture within my work. Um, I made this, this, this was a show also in New York. I, I made this a structure like a cage, um, and then I hung these photographs on them. I, I didn't mention this, you could kind of maybe see it easier here. The, I, I, from early on, when I had that show um, of, the, of the goals, um, I didn't want to, put, I, I, I was like, I'm, I'm clear in my head, I want to push photography out of its boundaries. And if I was doing it already or not, and it was registered or not, I'm, I'm going to like literally object object-wise, push it out of photography. So the work, all this work you are seeing, they are being stretched on a stretcher bar, like a painting, um, which is also something quite abusive 
material wise so the same way i'm i'm basically abusing the material here by hitting it one could say you are doing the exact same thing by stretching the paper around the stretcher bar the paper can't take it the paper will rip apart you know how is even if, even a photographic paper is a strong enough for this kind of treatment, let's say, which is the same issue with this. Is, is this a sculpture strong enough for this treatment? Um, you could kind of see that here. Um, and then, of course, within every work, I, I was starting like doing something with the work. So like there's like this knife hanging from it, um, different kind of different arrangements of the work. Um, and that's, I don't know if you recognize you, you recognize that, I know, that just, I, I just talked about it. Um, and then that other one was, I won't go back, but um, this was also from my first show at Tramps. Um, so this, I was, to some extent, also like this idea was that, you know, we, I guess we are all dealing with as an artist, to, to, the desire to make something new, and I'm constantly like, putting a focus of, this is new photography, but I, I also disagree with this desire of making constantly something new. So in most of my shows, I recycle things from the past. So this one came from my first show, this one came from my, second show in a sculpture center um I, I will i will i will pass over this i think it might take so long but then i i i i myself no one was caring people people were quite happy of seeing a work like this but then i made myself a challenge of well the work the photographic work historically needs a frame um so i came up with this idea of the work would have um a kind of frame but the frame is the cage and that's something you constantly see in the work also so there is a cage in the work, and that same cage becomes the frame for the work. Um, but I wanted, I, I mean, this is also part of the performance of like, I, we had made all these frames for the work, and then I would go to the, before the opening with an, with an ax, and I start breaking all these cages, and however they were broken, they would be installed on the work. You could kind of see every work had um, a, um, a broken cage. Um, as you can see it here, um, I will I will add this also to the um, part of the re the decision for the cages were I'm I'm, I'm very responsive. We were, we were talking with Caroline and Anya the other day. I I really find myself of some as someone who responds to what I, I, I could tell probably right now. Um, I had a, I had a visit with the curator and the curator asked me a very interesting or problematic question. Um, he asked, "I'm going to a dark room as an artist," and he didn't recognize anyone else doing to this extent of going to a darkness making a work. And he said, my main question is, are you breaking in or breaking out? I didn't understand the meaning of this question because what do you mean? And then the suggestion was that, well, are you trying to remember memories from the past? Or you are trying to make new kind of situations, which was, which was neither of them. I will, I will open it up a little maybe here. Um, but the reason I'm mentioning this breaking in and breaking out was that I took this idea of breaking in, breaking out, and I applied it to these cages, to these frames. So you would look at the work and it's not clear, for example, here, is, is the photograph going back to the cage or coming out? Is this photograph waiting to be fixed and be, be behind the cage again, or is coming out of the cage? Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. It's, it's not really clear. It's, it's up to you to decide if the work is going back behind the cage or coming out of the cage. If the work is wants to be behind this, let's say, cage, jail, prison, or wants to be free, basically. Um, same thing here again here um, but I will add one other thing because I, I think it's interesting to maybe bring it up a lot of people when they see the work they think um, the condition of the making the work kind of suggests that oh someone an Iranian in America going to the darkness maybe Iran was the dark place for him so he's going to remember what has happened to him this is the place he, re he remembers the abuse this is the place he recognizes or realizes what has he has gone through but in my case really it's I, I don't see it like that. It is, the work is, I, I believe you could probably say, the work is so much constructed based on the things I'm hearing from the audience, the things I'm receiving from the, from the real world, that it's just a construct of a power play. Um, so let me maybe should bring up, that was also another, again, coming back to the third show. Um, I will go a little faster here to, to talk something like that. Um, so um, the way I see the work, which I'm very happy to also see how you guys see the work in response to what I'm saying. But um, basically, I, the, the, the process of making this work, I believe it's, it sounds quite free. And for a photographer going to the darkness, not using any camera, having no obligation of lens, shutter speed, whatever that comes with the medium of photography, and 
just painting what he wants to paint. I think it sounds quite free. I, I, I believe I should be seen as someone who is free, basically, of any problem, uh, not problem, any any kind of uh, framing, any any kind of borders. This is a free. But um, I don't see it that way. I think it, it, it's, it, it becomes only interesting. It becomes only art. If he, within this freedom, you make yourself within some limitations, within some framings. So very early on, I, I forced myself that I'm only going to use a mouse, a dog that you could probably recognize in the work, a mouse, a dog, a cat, and um, a human that you saw it basically. And um, the reason I did that was because I, I wanted to keep the work in a, in a political stance because what, what I see political is some sort of resistance against what's happening outside. That thing happening outside could be the politics of the world, could be the politics of the art world, could be what your friends is making, could be what you see that becomes the mainstream. So uh, that's what I mean by political. This the power play that exists, and the artist should do something against it. Should be something, some sort of resisting. That's how it makes it political. Um, so, and I, I use these four characters because my idea was with the with the human, with the dog, with the cat, and with the mouse. You give these four characters to any human that lives right now on the on the earth, they will come up with a hierarchy of value with them. So, um, it, it, I mean, the examples are like um, endless. So let's say um, let's say there is a there is a there is a human, there is a dog, there is a cat, there is a mouse. If if someone asks you which one should we give Cons Hollet to run, probably you will choose the human. And if you say, no, 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 the human isn't an option, probably you will use the dog. And if we take the dog out between cat and mouse, you might use the cat, and the mouse is the last option. S same thing, let's say, um, if, if there is four, this kind of four hierarchies of, again, do human, dog, cat, and a mouse, and you need help, which one will you call for help? You know, the, the idea is that we will call the mouse the last for so many reasons, but the hierarchy is their kind of that. That's the least valuable. That's the most kind of useless creature within these four. And in my work, I wanted to constantly um, um, deconstruct this hierarchy of value and then reconstruct it. So here, it, it happens constantly in the work. You see that, um, maybe I'll just go a bit too fast maybe. So like here, you see that um, the, the cat is hiding behind and the mouse is coming to the party, let's say. Um, you see that um, You see that the cat and mouse are, hanging out, um, you see that um, the cat is taking the, mouse, the dog and the mouse all together out, um, all these other things. But again, underline, I think it was, if, if I don't know if you have seen the work before or it's the first time you are seeing it, but, and I'm going quite fast on the work, but I believe you might be able to recognize this presence of the house basically on the work. There is always a house, there is always a shelter, there is always a jail, there is, there is always this architectural space that Maybe they are trying to get in, or maybe they are trying to get this out. The same thing here, they are leaving. Will they come back from the house? It's, it's, it's always there. This idea of the inside-outside thing is always there. And I think maybe that's just my version of talking about the real world, the, the life we are living, the state, the countries, the, however that it fits for one. But also it's very open, I guess, that um, I believe you don't need this in kind of info because you're already probably projecting on the work what's the meaning of it. Um, Maybe we should stop it there. I mean, the work can go on and I can talk more, but maybe I think it's, it's, a, it's a good place to stop. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, while well, we were sitting here, Kathleen said to me, uh, oh my God, I never heard such a talk. I think it's uh, about how open you speak about like the processes that like were happening to you. That's normally the things we try to hide right. in our work. And we were, we were talking about this yesterday when we had uh, breakfast together. And uh, maybe I will pass it on to to Kathleen then, because we because she was actually the one who brought up the idea of the Joker that you are kind um, of Joker in this in this art game. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> actually, despite having this long talk yesterday, there was a lot of new information for me too, and like it was so enjoyable to hear your process with all the failures. <laughs> right. That's like really really cool. Yeah. I think there was like 
yesterday in our talk, the main thing that I that ca came in my head huh? was this this notion of subversion, and um, that like there are so many levels of subversion one can find in your work, and um, one more I got aware today that's like you're totally twisting the observer. Like actually, that's that's another thing that we didn't talk about yesterday. Right. That you kind of uh, free the medium from from its mission to observe anything, but like you act like something. But like then, yet the images you you depict have that observing quality because you you work with this archetypes and the systematization of um, of these power structures right. basically. Right. And yeah, and that. Like by by going into this position of a joker who has nothing to lose, who has no obligation, who has no responsibility for anything, like like refusing to be an expert, to be a professional in photography, in art, in art history, in art, like in culture overall, like by refusing all this, you actually achieve the freedom to to really speak, <laughs> right. and and that's that's like the the archetype of the of the joker or right. Like we were mentioning Nusra, no, well, Nasreddin. Um, what's what's his name again? Who? Nasreddin Mullah Nasreddin. Mullah Nasreddin right? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, um, um, you want to tell a little about him also? It's a, it's a fictional <laughs> no, figure. Like, yeah, it's a, like that. We just yeah. It's, it's that fool basically. That. But I I I think it's. I mean, it's interesting the idea of Joker also. But um, I don't see it so much as a Joker because I guess Joker historically has this act of like being a sociopath or trying to. I, it's, I, I see it more like a fool, maybe someone who, um, someone who kind of used satire to some extent to kind of represent what's happening in the in the world, you know. But part of it is mainly also, it's, it's, I think, it's interesting to some extent. To some extent, that that was the idea of a photograph. What's, what's the photograph supposed to do? It's supposed to represent the world. So um, you might use. In, in my case, I, I, I'm interested in deconstruction and the, when, it's, when you deconstruct something, I think it becomes a little funny or humorous because it's being deconstructed or being seen as wrong, you know, or um, I don't really think the work is funny in its essence. A cat talking with a mouse on a bench is not necessarily funny. It only becomes funny if you are surprised by, by imagining a situation like that. Um, and, and, and I think it's very interesting because, um, you know, like, you could make joke if you want to make something funny, but I, I see it more like this idea of um, when 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 you when you consider yourself fool enough, you you become the fool to be able to talk about. I mean, that's the reference to Molana Nasreddin. I, I don't know how many of you guys know of this figure, but it was like a Middle Eastern, very famous within the region of Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Iran, probably Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. It was like a kind of popular fictional figure that would, people would use him as. Um, as the fool, because he's the only one who isn't scared of telling the truth. Because if if he's been questioned, he's the fool basically. But what can you explain from a fool to to like understand the politics of the world? He just tells what's happening outside. Um, I don't also not really see myself as a fool of the, the, this old thing, but um, I'm, I'm I believe I would like to describe it like this. I think it's the idea of a free agent. It's someone. I mean, why else would you come to art if you are not seeking? the truth, seeking that be able to say what you want to say or what you think is important to say or what you think is important to be heard, you know? Um, that's, that's, I guess, how I see it to, to that extent of, you know, being able to, being able to criticize something that's not so out of what we understand. So a, a lot of the things we are, um, maybe I'm criticizing in the work, I'm resisting against, it will only be received by the people who know art, who are making art, or who know about the art system. Like, I don't think uh, if you bring someone from outside to look at this work, would find it funny at all, because like, what they're talking about, what is this? It's like a child painting, like a four years old. That's, we were talking the other day. It's like, it, the, the work is only has its value if it has a value right now, because, because it's been recognized of what he's doing. Because if you show the work, the photo, at least the photo works to someone, it will be received as a child painting, and that's that's all they might see in the work without the context of the work, you know. And if and if you try to tell the context of the work, they can't receive it because they don't have the tools to in, to, to receive something like a context around a work like this. Let's say, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I think like, but that that's the other nice thing that like you can approach it from so many levels, right? Like you can like see the graphics and see some like caricature reference and then you see that it's photo paper and you imagine how these lines are actually getting there and you come to the idea that it's 
a wound on the paper right. that has been done like in the dark so like slowly very slowly it unveils very like much. all those levels of reflection that very are much possible. very much it, I, I, I would just add this this idea of the wound i like it i in new york i tried so hard to kind of register this idea that it's, it's quite interesting i mean i don't need to also push so much for it but i, I found it interesting to language how the work is being made through a photographic medium is called bleeding. So if, if, if you use the light on the paper and the light tries to escape the, the flashlight, the term for it is called bleeding, the light bleeds out. Um, but um, not everyone really hears it or they, 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 they get offended by the idea of like, oh, bleeding, so it's something violence happening or the idea of the wound as you're describing. These are all through the linguistic world, but in reality, I think what you're describing as, as a wound is you recognize the artist is abusing the material. Well, why is he abusing the material? What's his point of doing something like that? Why would you push it to extreme? I think at least one thing happens when you push something to extreme within the art system, because the art place is, I think, is the only place you can push something to the extreme. I don't think in my um, social relationship I could push anything to extreme, because what's, what's your point? Are, are, you, are you crazy? But within this art system, I mean, if you're not pushing it to extreme, what are you doing then, you know? So that's how it ends up looking like maybe abusive, maybe a violent, maybe wound or bleeding. But in fact, it's just put, um, accepting the medium, the material as given, and saying, I'm going to push it as much as I can to see what happens. In my case, I will just say it in parentheses, maybe it's interesting. In my case, I have, I think I have pushed it too much that the work has been in painting, sh more painting shows than photography shows. And I'm quiet, I'm not happy about it to some extent because I'm happy that the work is being received as painting, but the work is photographed. I mean, it's light and photo paper. What else you could call this? Um, I, will, I will tell a small story. I think it's, maybe that's why I'm a little upset about it because there is this, um, the work was chosen to be added to a, the partner of a museum in New York. Um, it's interesting. Um, now they are questioning. That the work is on hold for them, but they have one main question. Can we call this a photograph? We are not sure. And it's, it's quite interesting. Like the push I have done, I think they, they, it's not being recognized by a photo department as photograph. Um, my, my question to them, I, I, I asked like, um, tell us what it is. We will go to that department. It, it, should we go to the painting department? Should we go to the sculpture department? You know, something like that. But um, that, that only happens within that extreme push, extreme kind of um, using the material to its, to its limits, basically. And still you like decided, I think, to not speak about the process of how you're doing the work, right? You no, I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Um, I'm happy to explain if 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 you, if you think it's interesting. So I, I found it super interesting. I know. If, uh, I don't know if you are up for that, but I found it very like enlightening to to hear how how you're doing these paintings, um, this this photograph. Sorry. No, I'm I'm happy to. I'm happy to talk. Um, what what I was telling Anya, we were talking yesterday. I um I have avoid um explaining the process of making the work in the press release because I think um that's something really annoys myself as a viewer, I guess, and I think it annoys a lot of people, when you go to an exhibition and it looks like that, you have to read this um, recipe to understand the work, as if if you read it carefully or you read this recipe of how the work is being made, then you would understand it, and I don't think that's the case. I think the work is understood without really knowing the details of the thing behind it, but I'm very happy to discuss um, um, to how the work is made. Um, the first work I showed, that, that was quite chaotic and um, noisy, let's say, or uh, problematic. Um, that was made quite quick. It was made within 10 minutes. I would just go and quickly, um, and I wasn't used to the darkroom to some extent. So I, was, uh, I spent 10, 10 to 15 minutes and would, the work was done. The work you are seeing now, basically, I spent eight to 10 hours in the darkness. It's a quite long time to be um, blind, to, not, to be awake and not see. It's almost the time of also sleep. Um, and the reason for that is my lights are quiet. I have diffused my light so much so it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't um, register on the paper. It wouldn't leave the mark by a quick hand gesture. So I go very slowly. So in order to paint that cat, let's say, it's, it might take two hours because I go so slow on the photo paper. I, I would basically count, like, I don't know, for, for each move, I would count maybe one minute, two minutes. So it would burn the paper. It would leave that black mark on the paper. Um, so I, I'm in the darkness for eight hours and it's, it's quite, nonsense because you, any of you guys might ask like, what's your point what's the what's the point of doing something like that what, what why would you do that and i asked myself that too but then i i 
and that's 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 a kind of quite a slow thing. But in my case, I'm te I'm telling the whole thing as an art, as a kind of like a total art idea of. Um, so in, in the darkness, I'm doing that very slow process, but I, I'm not in the favor of something so slow. I'm, I'm more in the favor of contradictions, probably the oppositions. That's, that's basically the first thing you might recognize on that blue work is an opposition of a cat and mouse. We, we, are, we are accustomed to recognize that opposition. So in my case, and with photography, it just came up today also with the photographer we had, um, you know, like the idea of a flash and the idea of long exposure. This, the, the medium comes with kind of this language, linguistic terms within it that, that oppose each other, something long exposure, something quite like a flash or snapshot. And I wanted to kind of imply and add that, uh, that, that idea, that idiom to them, that, that kind of, that idea of these two sides of the spectrum of long exposure and a snapshot to the work. So I spent almost six hours making the work, just drawing the lines, but um, I want to have something like a quick snapshot, like a shutter click. So I have come up with, I, I believe that's the part you are also asking to about this. So um, as you saw the work I did in the sculpture center, if I just draw with light on the paper and I develop the paper, it comes out as a white surface with lines on it. And it's, it did look quite drawing-like and it won't have the cast of color that you see here. And I wanted to kind of push the push the work to the painting world. So what I did was um, I came up with the idea that after I'm done with drawing the work, drawing the figures, the work has to get, has to receive this extra treatment of light to it. It has to be revealed to the light. Probably the one very basic idea how to do that is well you and I I, I will mention this. I make the work on the floor. So after I after I draw these figures on the floor, um, I put it on the wall. It's kind of same size. And my darkroom is a little, not as long as this space, but like almost like where the bar is, maybe like behind the, somewhere in the middle. And I think, I mean, if you, if you work in a darkroom, probably the first thing how to expose this light is that you put the source of light in the back of the space and you just hit the key and the light goes and expose the light. Um, but in my case, I wanted to do something more than that. I wanted to take everything as a given and say, I will add my own treatment to it. So instead of, and I did that, I put the enlarger in the back of my studio sideways. Um, but instead of hitting the key of the enlarger to expose the light, I came up um, with, um, I made an electronic board, electronic circuit, which is, um, it has eight touch sensitive mics. It, it, it responds to, um, it responds to touch, it responds to heating. Um, maybe I should just maybe demonstrate it here. Um, so I have this board that's this big, a very big board with eight touch mics on it. Um, and it's connected to this um, board. The board is connected to my enlarger. Um, what happens is, um, I put the board on the, on the board. I, in, in my dark, in darkness, I go behind, um, I go behind this enlarger. And I, I have this different kind of ball in the space. I pick up a ball, and I swing the ball to the, to the board. In, 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 in a, in a condition of not seeing. So if you, if you close your eyes and you just turn around for five seconds, you don't find what direction you're looking at. Okay. I, I literally am looking at this person, but um, that, that, that really happens. But within this system, I find my way behind my, um, behind my end of them. And I threw the ball. If the, um, can we turn this on for a second? Um, I, I mean, it, might, it might be hard to recognize on this. I, I threw the ball, um, let me just, here, this might, might be the easiest. Um, I threw the ball to the work. Um, if the if the if the ball hits the photo paper, if the if the ball hits the photo paper, it will activate my light. The light flashes; it will capture the ball there. So that this whole performance becomes this idea of clicking the shutter for that snapshot, for that quick for that quick exposure. But what what and that 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 kind of that's that's so logical right now probably. And it's like oh that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is I throw the ball and no light goes on. That means the ball didn't hit the work. So I have to come again forward, try to find the ball to do it one more time. And I do it one more time and the light doesn't go on. Sometimes I do it 20 times till finally the light, the, the ball hits the, hits the work basically. That's, that's, that's one part of it. And, and when, when that happens, when, that, when, when the ball hits and the light goes on, I know that I'm done that day. I know that that's the end. I know that the work is made. I will add some other details also. The work is only made once. Um, I don't make test prints. There is no way to make test prints. There is no way to see what's the result of the work. 
till much after, maybe two weeks, three weeks after, when I developed the work with chemicals. Um, and these things I'm saying, they are, um, you, 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 you could have seen the whole work, you could have seen the whole work um, without um, noticing something like that, kind of detailed, process-based. Usually when you see that circle, you recognize as a moon or as a ball or as a, um, as a sun maybe or sunset or moonrise or something like that or full moon. But that's, that's there. That's, and that's also to, to some extent, that's, that's really the, the tie to back to the history of photography, of photogram, of an object, of a shadow of an object on the work basically. Um, I think that's, that's, these are the things happen. And, and the other thing happens is that I think within, I like to maybe think it like this way. When I throw the ball and I even, when the ball doesn't hit the work, I have to go and find the ball. And, um, you know, imagine in the darkness, if you're trying to find something on the floor and you're blind and you don't see, it's not the smartest idea to walk, try to find it because you just bang your head to the wall. You come like an animal, you start crawling in the space. So within the system, in that dark room, there is the human, there is the dog, there is the cat, there is the mouse. We are all trying to help find this object to, to make the work done, complete. It's, it's confusing and that's why I don't explain it. I, it's, I, I really, it has never came up on the text because one, I, if I read that, I would say, what the fuck is talking about? This is crazy. It's like, what's his point? <laughs> so. Um, but you, Tamara, could you please say it to the mic? <laughs> so the question is, why sculptures? So it's like more like playing with the space, or is it something you want to illustrate? Another additionally, you know, put another layer on your two-dimensional works. I mean, I think it's. I mean, it's it's all of that, honestly. Um, to some extent, I sometimes think about my teacher very early on when I didn't have any equipment. Um, then they told me you don't need to be a photographer. Why do you want to be a photographer? Just do other things. But also I realized that the process of the work, something like this is quite unique that you might say, well, that's how, that's all he does. And I, I didn't want that. I, I, I don't, I don't think a position of artist is, it's fine if someone is very much medium based or medium oriented or dealing with only one medium to some extent. But in my case, I, I wanted to have. Um, my voice and and kind of you know it's like if you a little push the idea of um, if the, a little push the idea of an artist to something bigger like literature um, it, you, you don't really face with these ideas of why would you write only this kind and not the other a, a writer writes whatever they want to write it's always that the idea comes and you decide how it should be kind of manifesting within this um, physical world within the three-dimensional world in my case um, as you as you could see, there has been performance always the big part of the work. The photograph is there, um, the photograph is there, the sculpture is there, the painting is there. Um, so, to some extent, maybe just to make it easy and clear, I think it 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 only becomes interesting if I'm able to apply what I believe is important for art making to every medium that's given to me. So I see a sculpture given to me and I do something with it. I, I think to someone who makes a sculpture, probably my sculptures might seem as strange as, and, and as nonsense as these photographs would look to a photographer. They would really ask, what, what are you doing? What's your point? I mean, what is this really? So it's that, that... more rather like an um, illustration of what your thoughts. Exactly. It's, 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 it's the extension of what I think should happen to a Mm -hmm. to, to, to something to become art. To some okay. extent. In, so it means in, in like the process is very random and very casual, but on the other hand, it's a pretty much should be predetermined before you start working yeah. what should happen. Very much. So this is like two parallel ways going together, like very random and on the other hand, very premeditated. Very much, very random, very detailed, very chance based, very controlled. So again, in my case, I'm very in the favor of keeping these oppositions against each other because I think when the two things oppose each other, two things clash with each other that are not supposed to be with each other. So the idea is going on a trip, accepting only by chance, but expecting something really specific happen to that trip. It's just, there is a chaos might happen, but it also might end up looking very good. That, that's, I guess, what com comes back to Carolyn's idea of maybe failure. Like when I constantly talk about this idea of failure, it's, it's constantly, the work has constantly failed, 
but also within this failure it has some sort of success within it so i, I feel good about it sure. but it, that, that's that's the idea that the two oppositions the two sure. contradictions each other so that's actually pretty much what we all artists try to do i mean i i, I or even the extended beyond art that's that's our life i mean you know it's in, in one single day you could have two different things happen exactly. that you can't expect you know it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a representation of life i guess that's that's what i would like to think yes. for art it is mike to anyone else thank you for this rush because um, the whole time you've been rushing so hard, like a German autobahn. You know, you. I think I'm rushing sometimes, but then someone is going full speed. And I was like, oh, fuck, this guy is rushing. So you, you speed in your talk, but you are so slow like a snail in your dark room when you paint with your light. And you have this macro concentration on this specific moment, like, and nothing, you, you can see nothing, and, and you uh, think you need it because otherwise you maybe can't concentrate when you have to do those, those drawings in an enlightening studio. And this is astonishing, but totally clear that you you live in those two worlds isn't it um most of my ideas i will just respond it with a, a speed example back to you but most of my ideas when i make something comes to me when i'm driving and the reason i'm driving and the, and the reason when that happens is because i see on my um, speed meter there is 250 kilometer 270 kilometer i could go but i can't go I should stick to 120 kilometer or 130 kilometer. And when that happens, an idea comes to my mind. But I told this to a friend of mine, and they said, don't come to Germany, because in Germany you could go all the way, so you, your art might fail. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's quite a humorous thing to say, but what you are describing is what we just said. It's the, it's the clash of two ideas. It's the clash of the speed, the rush, the urgency, and the idea of slowness, the life goes on, what's the point of rushing, you know, it can't even deliver what you want to deliver, but it, it only exists within this system. One other thing, which, which is quite interesting, I guess what you're bringing up is, um, I mean, the, the, the contradictions are endless. Darkness, light, that, that's, that's, the, that's the logic of photography. So light has to expose in a dark space for this to happen. Same thing with ceramic and sculpture. The, 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 the ceramic piece has to go through um, a fire, kind of an oppositional to the water and the body to, to come out as, 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 as finished. Um, it, it's, it's all over. This contradiction of the two different opposi oppos opposing sides meeting at some place and causing something to come up is, is all over. Um, so sure, I mean, uh, the, the speed and the rush and the slowness is part of the work. I probably wouldn't be able to make this work if I didn't have these two kind of forces working at the same time with each other, let's say like that. No, for sure. And another question to this um, ceramic columns with the teddy bears in it and the palm tree. Um, this is, this is, so playful it hurts sometimes because i i feel i feel the the delightness and the concentration in your photographs but it's hard and then you you'd right put them in front of the view so um but, but do you like the hair or it it, it it really hurts and you it, it dislike it i mean i guess that's the um Let's say like this, um, what, what, what's my hope as an artist is every single thing I'm making should look like an open door. That's my hope. That the viewer might feel comfortable even with the hurt, let's say, or even you might be suspicious that it, it might hurt to get closer to it, but you might want it because it looks welcoming to you. I think that's one very issue of contemporary art within my generation is that the work doesn't seem open enough for someone to enter and experience it. Mm -hmm. To be wrong, I mean, I, 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 I could project on the idea of what, what might hurt. Is it the idea of being wrong? Is it the art idea of 
maybe the viewer is th thinking about something wrong in the work, you know, all those things could hurt. But I, my hope is that hurt actually feels good. That you must say, hey, it hurts, but I like it. I, 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 I want to spend time around it, you know, something to that, something. It's a, it's a desire probably from an artist, a dream from an artist to think like that. Yeah, so sometimes it looks like you could, couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand it? Yeah, you, you couldn't stand the, the clearness and then tell right. a joke to... But by you, you mean the artist or the viewer? Oh, I'm, I mean you as an artist. Um, I could... Sure, I can understand it because, mainly because probably... Um, I will try to kind of respond to something more open so everyone can maybe um, tolerate or kind of... Um, um, so everyone can kind of... Um, engaged with it what what i think what you can't stand as an artist is if you can't support the work usually you cannot support the work if um if it's not doing something you want it to do and by that i think it goes to the idea that a lot of artists have a meaning in mind have a concept in mind and the work becomes the presentation representation of that meaning the meaning is there that's why people write press releases because you have to know the meaning so then you understand why this work is representing the meaning. In my case, what I can't understand as you are describing or what you are responding probably, that's your way of maybe putting it in language. I think what you are responding is, what you are saying is, the artist doesn't know what he's making. And that's true. I have no meaning of the work. I, the work isn't really a manifestation of a meaning. The work is representation of not having a meaning, but is still making it, putting in the space and see what happens. So, and that's why, I, I mean, it, it, it might have been quite clear in my talk, is that's why the, the public matters so much, because they are bringing the meaning to the work, something like that, you know? I, I, Thank you. Yeah. Very last one. Yeah. I think it's fitting very much, so I'm going to try to add to this what you have said. Um, so I see that it's more about parameters, actually, and I feel also that you are trying to keep the game on running. For me, it's really a surprise that you are not into references from the art history and you were always denying this background from your parents and also what you, your experiences with photography. And now I really want to know, or I'm very curious, you run this game and you have the parameters very clear the hierarchies and you found okay this is working and the next step would be you know this do you do you keep the parameters right now do you keep the figures do you keep the materials or are you ready to change everything again um it's a, it's a very hard question i guess to to think about to, in order to answer because um Again, I would say it only depends the, what happens from the work in public. Like, I was ready to change everything, you know, but I guess what you are suggesting is like, it seems like I have changed everything, but in fact, it's still very photographic and I'm still going to the darkness. So should I change the bigger arch? Probably not right now. But do I want to also forever be the person who goes to the darkness to spend eight hours? Maybe not, you know? But it's so much, I, I, would, I, I believe the parameter of making art in my case or people I maybe would find interesting is when the art isn't necessarily an expression tool, you don't use, you don't make the art to express only, you make the art to communicate something. So, because if it's all about the expression tool, it's like to, to express, it becomes too selfish and it can't really co connect with the, someone else. You cannot really make something so true to your expression and expect it to be an open door for everyone else to come and enjoy. It has to be, the parameter should be living on an idea of communication so that you would say, hey, I think I understand what you are saying, or I don't understand what you are saying, but I think I understand what's this work about. Let's say it like that, you know? Um, so, and that will change because the modes of communication changes because the world is changing, you know? Um, I don't know to what direction it would change, but it will change and it has changed constantly from the last seven years, I guess. Thanks.
just said that it's a good good ending sure. here. Thank Please. you very, Thank very you. much also for being here and coming and asking questions. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Kato and Keta, who will play some music. Matthias, thank you. And also, of course, uh, Till and Pia, thank you for organizing us, uh, this with us. So, yeah, stay a little bit and have fun, have a wine and see you. See you in two weeks when Collier Shaw will be speaking. She will not be here, uh, but we will, I guess we will meet here again in the salon and we will have her online via Zoom. So very much looking forward to this. Thank you, everyone. Have thank you, nice Ania. Thank you all.